Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the 2024 Mahindra XUV 700 and not much has changed. Even the key is the same as before. However, Mahindra has given it slight updates because obviously the Tata Safari got an update and the Safari now has a lot more features when compared to even the updated version of the XUV 700. Now this is the black edition I think because it gets a black grille which you can see right away. In fact, this is the new Napoli black color and the regular five colors now get the dual tone option as well for the sunroof. I mean not the sunroof because the sunroof is so big. I think the whole roof is a sunroof but the roof now is black finished, finished in black whatever as an option. So there are like 10 colors there and then this color is only available with the AX7 and the AX7L. This is actually the AX7L. This is the petrol and straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay because this engine is amazing in terms of performance. But yes, it has a drinking habit. There's insulation there. It kind of sounds like a diesel right now. I don't know why. Of course, it has got this updated color on the grill, but dimensionally it remains the same as before. There's a camera here for the 360 degree parking camera radar right there and obviously a camera there as well for the ADAS system but before we start let me show you this awesome car perfume from Involve Your Senses this is the Involve One Splash it has this cooling effect you know why because it's an aqua scent it's super easy to regulate I can regulate it like this and it does not leak at all in fact when you step inside the car with this perfume inside it gives you a blast of coolness it's just freaking awesome I love it you can get yours with a 10% discount using coupon code FASTBEAM click on the top right corner of the screen right now so you get these massive LED DRLs, dynamic swipe indicators, fog lamps and all. The car is quite good looking. I will not deny that fact. However, the Safari still has a few more features. I don't know why Mahindra skipped giving more features to this car. And some of the features which are missing in this car are shocking to say the least. We'll come to that in a bit. 18 inch wheels, Safari gets 19 inch wheels, but that's fine because 18 inches will give you a better ride quality for sure. Camera here, door handles pop in and out, very much like the Range Rover Velour. And this is a six-seater. So there was the five-seater and the seven-seater earlier. Now it's available in five, six and seven-seater options. You have to pay, I think, 15,000 more for the captain seats. From the rear, again, it looks the same as before. <laughs> no change on that front. So a lot of black splashed here and there. We were making fun of Tata when they used to do the dark edition. Mahindra like, let's join the bandwagon. Not completely LED the lights because I can see a freaking bulb for the rear indicator no that's not the indicator that is the reverse light this is the dynamic swipe indicator get a camera there you get parking sensors at the rear however just two parking sensors what's wrong and the exhaust is placed right below dual exhaust of course let's open the boot and if you notice one thing it has a rear wiper washer high mounted stop lamp also has a shark fin antenna now here is a very small boot because with all the rows up you really can't keep much as such and if you want to recline the seat, it's very easy. Okay, before that, if you see, this is upright, this is reclined. So that is the seat adjustment. I can push it down like this to make some space. Oh, that's colliding there. But now you see there is good amount of space to carry a lot of things. You get a blower control there, AC vent as well, cup holder and a 12 volt charging socket, something I miss at the front because that's kind of not there in this car. And again, the same thing on both the sides. It has a fantastic audio system. By the way, spare wheel is placed right there and it is not an alloy. So cost cutting has been taken to an extremely different level altogether by not giving us a spare wheel, which is full sized and an alloy. Well, let's get this back up. Will I break something? I don't think so. I don't understand the logic of having this lever behind. Someone who sits in right there has to put his hands all over and then recline the seat. And why is the recline angle not the same? Now it is. So let's just shut this. Oh my goodness. Where is the electric tailgate? Which is there in the Tata Safari right now. By the way, it says Adrenox. And that's the reason if you read it like this, AX is the name of the variance, of course. So let's get inside. And I will tell you straight away, the big problem here is that this seat does not slide ahead or behind. It is fixed, but you get captain seats now in the second row. As an option, you get an armrest here. Isofix child seat mounts and it's very easy to get to the last row because all I have to do is pull this lever and there it folds. Problem is that space at the rear is not great and I'll just show you by getting inside. Okay, it's a bit of an acrobatic for me, but here we go. Now you can see knees up, no under thigh support, headroom is also not great. It has got speakers on the top, handle hook and all that is there obviously. I have to push it like this and there it folds. 
now i can get out of course so third row is best for children or for people you don't like let's get out from here oh my god look at that massive panoramic sunroof which by the way lot of cars are getting now which also reminds me why is there no sun blind here which the safari now gets of course so the safari is like become the king in terms of features in this segment no seat ventilation in this row which the safari now gets and it gets a usb c charging socket the only usb c charging socket in this car some storage here ac vents and you obviously get magazine holders height adjustable seat belts it has got seven airbags lights on the top handle hook all that is there but one thing is that in order to push the seat ahead you have to use this lever so it has got that boss mode but the safari has electric one with a button here or rather two buttons so that's again another good feature in the safari the dashboard looks the same as before very mercedes inspired with those dual screens but then hyundai and kia have also copied the same thing so it looks like mercedes has set up freaking benchmark doesn't feel uh, heavy as such the safari does feel a little heavier in that regard and obviously door pockets are big enough there's an umbrella holder as well the glove box is decent sized in fact there's a tray above there's a light okay multiple trays oh no no that's not the place to access there's a light here and mahindra has put so many features that they had to put a manual which is like really thick that's what she said see the size oh my goodness that's a lot to read i am not going to be able to do that so i'm just going to shut it a little bit of panel gap feels a little flimsy the leather treatment here dual stitching and all so yes certain things are really good in this car but i am really not understanding how mahindra has missed out on an important feature like an auto dimming inside rear view mirror a feature which even the xuv 400 now gets so yes mahindra has missed that one here because what is this that's so wrong and you got some buttons here obviously this is for stop start this is for the traction control this is for down assist proper dead pedal which is nice steering feels nice to hold i have turned on the light so you can't really see anything on the screen so i'll turn it off 10.25 in screen 10.25 in screen by the way the safari now gets a bigger 12.3 in screen so what has changed here for that i will have to roll down the windows it's one touch only for the driver side and i'm going to press one on the memory and you will notice one thing there the mirror is moving because now the memory function is there on the outside rear view mirrors as well however i had to keep pressing it again and again move the seat ahead and behind because it did not instantly activate so again very mercedes like you can save up to three people settings here and yeah another irritating feature is let's lock the car if i try to open the door it does not open unless and until i press this button usually if you try to open it like this it overrides the lock function in many of the cars and uh, this is a feature which is quite irritating for me personally because in certain cars i face that issue renault kiger to name a few there is no mirror here why not clip holder i don't have a clip but i have a face which i want to see again and again thankfully though there is a mirror here which activates with the light on top there is a sunglass holder right there and this is the sunroof control let's open the sunroof massive sunroof it has got lot of connected car features adri knox that is so it has got alexa also home to car and what not that's the reason why mahindra has also updated this so it gets slightly more features now so with ota updates people who do not have the new features will also get it and then it has got a few interesting connected car apps like i don't need just dial but yes it has got few interesting bits around here in fact notice one thing there's a button here if you press this button it takes a screenshot no that's actually for the camera so there's a screenshot button also somewhere no that's a screen saver button little bit confusing otherwise if you want to take a screenshot just press the accelerator and brake pedal and it takes a screenshot as well jokes aside it has got android auto it has got apple car play both of them work wirelessly in this car which is good it's got navigation maps my india navigation come on load quickly it can take some time so we are going to go to goa of course like we always do here yeah. i don't know what i've put but anyways let's take some directions and start all right once it starts navigating meters. all right okay keep quiet Turn left. it's telling me i'm reaching in 1.4 kilometers so now i want to show you that the mileage is 5 kilometers per liter of this petrol engine yes it's a sort of a drinker it's telling me navigation data there but the interesting part is i can browse meters. through a lot of stuff Turn here left. so i'm actually going to come into something called navigation meters. here and when i do that it's showing me in progress and there it is showing me the map view i can go full map view as well by hiding the speedometer as well as a tachometer now that is a cool looking cluster yes that is a lot of information right there so mahindra has definitely loaded this car with a ton of information and then you can browse through a lot of stuff using this button 
In fact, I'm going to come into the display layout and I'm going to change the display layout from information to the normal one because I think this one looks the best. There it is, circles around a bit and yeah, we've got it. So cruise control is there. It has got a lot of ADAS functions. These are the buttons for audio system. Let's listen to some music. So it has got a 12 speaker Sony 3D surround sound system, which is actually very good in terms of quality. And we have got a rotary controller here. I know you're looking at the Jeep key. Trust me on this. The compass is the best alternative to this particular car, the XUV700, because the top end version of the compass is actually cheaper than the top end variant of the XUV700. There you go. Value for money out of the table. Actually, the thing is that Mahindra has given a lot more features, but the best engineered product in this segment is no doubt the compass. Only thing is Jeep sales and service needs a lot to be desired from. So that's the disappointing part. Let me quickly put this car perfume here because it slots right into place. It also actually comes with a 3M stick, stick on. So you can stick it on the dashboard if you so wish. And this is the gear lever. This being the petrol does not get dry mode, zip, zap and zoom. Two USB charging sockets. I'm disappointed you do not get a USB-C here or you do not get a 12 volt in the front two rows. There's some storage space here. This is a wireless charging pad. Lot of buttons, physical controls, dual zone, climate control, air conditioning. Why is the screen disappearing? Okay, I think I turned this button on. So I'll just disable the screen saver mode, of course. Very slick screen to use. Let's get into reverse. This is the reverse parking camera. It obviously gets adaptive guidelines. I can actually take a photo. I can even go on the wider view and what is this yeah so we can change the modes for the cameras multiple views obviously and the best thing is it obviously has 3d views how do i move this though in the 3d view i am just trying my luck no you can move it uh this is quite slow so yes this software could be slightly better tweaked because it's moving but it's not moving that slickly why don't i get the full view so the thing is that people have complained about these screens they shut off randomly it has happened quite a few times let me shut off the car right now and I need to be in parking to shut it off. That's interesting. There, it's telling me the data. Obviously, the 700 comes there. It has also got a smart air filter. Screens are off. Let's turn on the car. And now the air conditioning is turned on. Another very interesting feature is the fact that now it gets seat ventilation for both the front seats. But I only wish they had a button here to turn on ventilation for the front seats because it's a little cumbersome to go into the touchscreen to do that. The air conditioning is actually a chiller. It says smart air filter right here. Let's browse from here. So you can even set a screensaver as per your own wish. So here I've just pressed the screensaver enabled button. It will automatically start showing me the Mahindra logo after a few seconds or something of that sort. Meanwhile, let's get out of this car because I want to show you a feature which nobody really talks about because this is something I'd noticed when I had gone to drive this car to Mahindra's research valley long, long back. So we locked the car and I keep this button pressed. Okay, only the driver's side is auto one touch up and down. And that's the reason why this particular window opened with this button. And also the sun blind opens with this button, which is interesting. And the sunroof also opens using this button. So yes, that's a nice feature to have because this feature was very limited to German cars, but now Mahindra is also offering it. So I'm quite excited about that and happy also because it can be useful. Only thing is they should give one touch power up down for all the four power windows. Why just restrict it to the driver's side and the sunroof, which by the way is closing. Let's start driving right away. Let's turn on the car right away. And it's very smooth. It kind of sounds like a diesel in certain areas, but then we are going to put the steering back up. Adaptive cruise control off. I never turned it on in the first place. Let's turn off traction control. Once I turn off traction control, automatic emergency braking is unavailable. Air conditioning off. Let's turn on the screen. Where's the screen? Why is it vanished? We'll come to fun with XUV700. We'll have these power and torque meters. We get into drive mode. I will get it into manual mode. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Hazard lights off and off we go. Wheel spin, huh? Up shifting at 5000 RPM. That's a little too early. Shifting slightly above 5000 RPM. Again, that's a bit too early. And that is the 0 to 100 km per hour acceleration, which is actually quick enough. And then obviously it has this blind view monitor in the instrument cluster, which looks nice. So this is actually the petrol 2 liter M Stallion motor, which is quite punchy in terms of performance because this one produces 200 horsepower. That's a 200 freaking horsepower and 380 Newton meters of torque. Now that 200 horsepower obviously comes in at 5,000 RPM quite late, 
मीन वाइल द टॉक आउटपुट ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड एंड एटी न्यूटन मीटर्स कम्स इन एट अ लो सिक्स सेवेंटीन फोर्ट फिफ्ट सेवेंटी फिफ्टी आर पी एम एंड स्टेज दैर टिल थ्री थाउजेंड आर पी एम द रिजल्ट इज द परफॉर्मेंस इज वेरी लीनियर इट्स वेरी पंची एंड इट फील क्वाइट एक्साइटिंग टू ड्राइव द मैनुअल इज ऑब्वियसली बेटर सो दे इज अ सिक्स स्पीड मैनुअल और अ सिक्स स्पीड ऑटोमेटिक सेम विद द डीजल एज वेल बट विद द डीजल दे टू स्टेट्स ऑफ ट्यून द डीजल इज द टू पॉइंट टू लीटर नाउ इज गोट से समथिंग इज गोट अवॉइड कोलिशन या कोलिशन पॉसिबल इट सेज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस नॉट टंकी ऑफ एडा इज ना द डिस्क ऑफ नॉट द डिस्क एक्चुअली द ब्रेक पैट्स ऑफ दिस कार वेर आउट वेरी क्विकली बिटवीन फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड किलोमीटर सो एडास इज बेटर नॉट देर और यूज एनी वॉज दट नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट इंपॉर्टेंट इज दट ग्राउंड क्लेंस इज डिसेंट इन अफ एंड द राइड इज ऑल्सो क्वाइट गुड नाउ ऑन टू दॉटल बिकॉज यू आर इन मैनुअल मोड नाइट डि नॉट डाउन शिफ्ट टू अर लोअर गेयर Around the corners, there is body roll. It feels top heavy, but it feels very predictable as such. Now you can hear the tires screeching a bit. Grip levels are fine, but not the best as such because obviously this car is made for. I mean, it's not made for cornering, of course. It's made to be driven smoothly, and when you drive it smoothly, it does perform well. When I say smoothly, I mean not cornering aggressively. Performance is actually very good with this petrol engine. It's so exciting to drive. The diesel produces 185 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque for the manual, and for the automatic, you get 450 newton meters of torque. And then there's a lower spec diesel with 150 horsepower, 155 horsepower. Actually, I think the base MX or something has that. So that is something which can be tuned to offer 185 horsepower as well, because you can obviously change the maps. And I'm seeing a lot of these Thar diesels being modified from 130 horsepower to 180 horsepower because this engine is very capable. Not this, the diesel I'm talking about. The petrol is good, but petrol is a drinker of sorts. And the problem with the petrol is that it cannot really be mapped because they are using old Porsche ECUs from. China <laughs> so tuners are not able to crack it it's very difficult and complicated they have given up already so they don't really touch the petrol powered mahindras they do touch the diesel powered ones and for me personally diesel is the choice because here this car can comfortably do 200 km per hour but it drinks fuel like no other because it's a heavy vehicle right at the end of the day and then so much power performance and also drinking is a natural habit of it wherein it will return around 3 to 4 to 5 6 km per liter drive it sanely it will return around 8 to 9 km per liter do not expect double digit numbers from this engine because it simply cannot give you that kind of fuel efficiency at all so yes it's refined it's smooth but it feels very diesel like in its character because of the torque and then it doesn't rev beyond 5 and a half thousand rpm like 5800 rpm is the red line realistically speaking that's it yeah <laughs> not much to talk about in terms of the petrol engine because that's something which most people would I mean it will be better if they avoid it but then there are people who opt for the petrol if they are scared of NGT and if they stay somewhere in Delhi or NCR region but a diesel is a diesel is a freaking diesel this one does not get the option of all wheel drive the diesel gets the option of all wheel drive as well and that variant costs almost rupees 33 lakhs on road mumbai yeah the safari also costs that much but at least mahindra is offering us all wheel drive cars are getting really very expensive insanely expensive you won't believe it the jeep compass yes the jeep compass costs slightly lesser when compared to the xuv 700 and that also comes with four wheel drive and automatic and diesel and all that so If you want a better engineered product, the Compass is a better choice. But only thing is that Jeep's after sale service is kind of bad. So that's the reason why you would probably want to avoid one. Now I'm just going to get into this particular mode because there's something interesting I want to put in this display layout. I have this no, not in this display layout. It gets a bit confusing at times, and it's not the fastest in terms of operation. Okay, that's the tire pressure monitor. There is the power and torque meter as well. Now here can we change something yeah we can browse like this it has a freaking lap timer why does it have a lap timer which circuit is this car going to go the thing is it handles quite well for what is an SUV and i will call it a crossover SUV because it gets the option of all wheel drive unlike some of its rivals which are just front wheel drive jacked up hatchbacks this is actually the real deal just because it has got the option of all wheel drive and at least mahindra makes its own engines unlike some car makers in the same segment who beg borrow steel engines from the fca group and that's how the fca group actually makes money fca mane jeep ke papa yani ki stellantis ke bacche waise samajh rahe ho na so yes i really like the xuv 700 but i am more of a scorpio fan this because i've been driving the scorpio and almost daily that's my daily driver and i find this car so much easier to drive because the steering feels so much easier and nimble and agile but look at that roll the scorpio and obviously rolls a lot more but that is body on frame with even a but it's even higher and taller and what not but this car trust me on this it feels super easy to drive the steering does we up at high speeds and uh, the steering is actually quite light yeah a light steering wheel onto the throttle it 
pulls yeah it just pulls it does not hesitate at all obviously has a suit of ARAS features now this was one of the first few cars to get ARAS and now obviously everyone is copying it so there's automatic emergency braking forward collision warning there is adaptive cruise control lane departure warning lane keep assist and a lot of these things which have been misused by others who are sitting behind and making videos of someone I mean the car driving itself not someone the car automatically drives itself so it does have the soul of Taz in the Wonder car you know the first ADAS system came in Taz in the Wonder car it had ADAS yeah it actually had Ajay Devgan assistant system <laughs> what a bad joke what a stupid joke but anyways so comfortable car smooth nice and all I just wish that Mahindra had given it even more updates because this mirror now irks me every time I look at it I'm like how much would it cost them anyways and they already are putting it in the xuv 400 so what's the delay in getting it here otherwise this car is quite feature loaded obviously tata has taken it a step forward in terms of offering a lot more features because the safari is like loaded with crazy amount of features the only thing is that the safari is not as reliable as the xuv 700 which itself is not as reliable as say a jeep compass which itself is not reliable as i can go on again and again but at this price range now you can also get the toyota innova high cross which is an absolute bulletproof proof bulletproof <laughs> bullet but i say i'm fumbling because Toyotas are not what they used to be. Now, obviously, Maruti is putting their stickers on Toyota cars, and Toyota is putting their stickers or logos on Maruti cars. So, Toyota is not the most reliable, but the Innova High Cross is an extremely reliable car. What a fantastic machine! A car to definitely consider if you're in this price range to buy a car, which actually makes me want to do the brake test. So, we shall do it right away. Hazard lights on, and oh, where are we? Yeah, I'll just turn on the camera if I can. And here we go. What an oversensitive ABS system in this car. Now, I will quickly change the mode here, display layout. We are going to come into the minimal one. Let's see what it shows me. And left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, camera view on, revving the motor. Did I stall the car? It's turned off because of the stop start system, I think. Yeah, there it turns on. Revving the motor and off we go. Wheel spin, baby, wheel spin. So there are no paddle shifters as well. Another glaring omission because the Safari offers it. Now, everything the Safari offers, I want it in the XUV 700. Because mechanically, I feel the 700 is a better car overall. And it does pull quite fast. So you have to be a bit careful because it gathers space instantly. So the price range actually starts at around 16.4 lakhs for the base variant. Going all the way to 33 lakhs, 32.85 lakhs on road Mumbai for the top end variant. This one costs 30.5 lakhs. For the automatic, you end up paying around 2 lakhs more. For the all-wheel drive you pay around one and a half lakhs more so that's the price difference all the price differences are on road mumbai of course and honestly it is the all-wheel drive diesel automatic the one which to buy because even though it has a lot of power the manual has slick shifts the clutch isn't that heavy either so so many options for buyers in this segment right now because Mahindra is itself offering all sorts of powertrains and then xuv 800 is also coming which is obviously going to be electric a little bit bounce here and there now the ride is similar to the older car there is no difference in the ride quality but it has a technology which is similar to the one on the jeep compass known as fsd frequency selective dampers this results in better ride quality but the ride can be a bit busy at certain speeds so not the best ride but the balance between ride and handling is very good the steering is unbelievably light super light like super duper light i'll show you how light it is you can twirl it with your chin to min to little finger as well now that is how light the steering wheel is and somehow it weighs up at high speeds usually that's not the case but they have managed to ensure that the balance is very good in fact i have driven this car at a top speed of rather its top speed of 205 kilometers per hour on Mahindra's test track when it was initially launched, the MMRT, I think. No, no, that, that is something else. MSPT, okay. And trust me on this, this car stays glued to the road at those speeds and it manages to reach the double turn without much effort. Okay, I was supposed to do it with the little finger, never mind. I forgot. Here you see, it is so easy to drive this car. It feels so light and the steering wheel centers as well really quickly. The Compass is actually a fantastic car, very underrated only because of Jeep's lack of marketing and poor sales and service network. However, you should always get a diesel because you pay around 1.1 lakhs more for the diesel, which is completely worth it. By the way, Mahindra does claim that they've reduced the waiting period on this car. So the waiting period earlier was obnoxious. Now it is a little bit more realistic because for the AX7 trims, you can get the car in under three months. Meanwhile, for lower variants, you can get the car in under a month's time 
which is decently quick. In fact, uh, the price increase for the AX7 is 35,000. The price increase for the AX7L is rupees 50,000. And Mahindra has actually decreased the prices of some of the variants by around 15,000 and all that. However, I feel that the top variant is the best to buy with all those features. Although more the tech, more the problems is what I feel. And can I press the button to do something here? Oh my god, I can change the views and this works very well while driving as well. Meanwhile, the gearbox is a little slow in terms of shifts. It's not very fast, it's not very proactive. It takes its own sweet time, especially when you're driving pedal to the metal. Otherwise, when you're driving slowly now, no issues with the gearbox. And on that discovery, it's time to end. By the way, it's a top convert automatic gearbox and it's okay. Bye now. Thank you so much.